Greetings from Calusa, California, United States of America. My name is Donald William Bill Littlejohn. In December 1942, I was a combat fighter pilot for the United States of America Army Air Corps. Today I have been invited by the author Carlos Guerrero to discuss and comment on his book and my experiences in Portugal in December 1942, January 1943. As you all are aware, the name of the book is Landing in Portugal, Belligerent Pilots and Aircraft of World War II. In English, the word belligerent here doesn't mean the pilots were belligerent, but they were combat uh, pilots in uniform of different nations, and there were belligerent participants. And that is the manner in which the book title is understood in English. Carlos has requested that I discuss the background information of my landing in Portugal and my treatment. And while I want to talk about his book, he has insisted I should talk about what happened to me. Uh, um, between Christmas and December 1942, and the information I'm going to give you is now declassified, I left England one early morning with a fighter squadron of 23, 24 aircraft together with a navigation plane consisting of a B-25. The planes were all P-39s or an export model of the fighter that you saw earlier, a P-400. They're both substantially the same type of Bell aircraft and the mission was the first of its kind of single engine aircraft with 150 gallon belly tanks to fly from England to Port Leote, Morocco, French Morocco. That flight was the longest ever undertaken by this type of single craft aircraft, single craft aircraft with a belly tank of the type. Unfortunately, when I had reached the point of no return to England, I experienced a fire in my cockpit, which at the time indicated that I may have to parachute into the Bay of Biscay. And having looked at the high white, white caps, I looked for all other alternatives. Even more fortunate was that my aircraft, which was running on a very low RPM of 1,750, permitted me to remain airborne. And as briefed by my intelligence officers, an alternative landing would be in the neutral country of Portugal. Fortunately, I was able to reach the Lisbon airport early in the afternoon, but I discovered upon arriving that my aircraft, which was run by all electricity rather than hydraulics, would not permit me to automatically land my landing gear. As I arrived over the airport at Lisbon, I confirmed my worst fears that I'd had an electrical fire which uh, crippled my aircraft to the extent that I had no landing gear, uh, no flaps, no control of my propeller, and I then reverted to a manual method of lowering my landing gear, which was done by a crank to the right of my cockpit seat, which took approximately 15 to 20 minutes. And after about half hour of circling the Lisbon airport, I decided to commit to a one chance landing, no way to go around, and cross the fence at 125 miles per hour. The normal speed would be 90 to 100 miles per hour, and fortunately was able to bring the aircraft to a halt approximately 50 feet from the end of the runway. It was quite an experience. I was immediately surrounded by Portuguese troops in troop carriers, uh, permitted to taxi off the runway for any other aircraft. And when I dismounted the aircraft, I was so happy to be on ground. I remember kissing the ground as the soldiers stood by, grinning 
uh, and some clapping. After, uh, after I was taken into custody, I was taken before a local official, but in the meantime, another aircraft in my squadron landed, which contained my commanding officer, Lieutenant Colonel Wade. Both of us were interrogated together, which amounted to short questioning, no compulsions, upon identifying ourselves, name, num number, rank, uh, that was the extent of the interrogation. We were moved immediately to the State Department of the Portuguese government, where we were treated very friendly, and joined later by three other pilots from the same flight that had landed, crash landed, along the coast along the northern part of Portugal. Uh, most of us were later in the evening after being fed a fabulous meal taken to the airport where for the first time I was somewhat fearful. There was a tremendous crowd at the airport. The whole area was lit up with Craig lights. It looked like I was in Hollywood. And when I stepped out of the vehicle in which I had been transported to the airport along with the colonel and two of the other pilots, I noticed we were on a red carpet, the crowd was screaming and yelling, and it was all friendly. So it was kind of a nice walk for about 50 feet to the railroad station where we were placed upon a railroad, in a railroad car, on a train that took us to our eventual internment place in Elvis. As you in Portugal know, that's very close to Spanish border, only a few kilometers and it's almost directly westerly, correction, easterly from Lisbon to Elvis. There we were placed in, a, uh, in the top hotel of that town. Uh, each of us had our own separate room uh, with uh, showers and bath at the end of the hallway for each room. Uh, in the morning we received a great breakfast. As a matter of fact, each day we had three meals minimum of five courses a meal, the uh, greatest food we had in a long time. Uh, we had to get used to one thing. With every meal, there was a large pitcher of wine. We were not used to this. I must admit, for the first two or three days, I think there was more indulgence in the wine than the food, but soon we all uh, returned to normal. Each day, we were required to report to a Portuguese colonel who was in charge of a cavalry unit, a beautiful horse uh, located just outside the wall around the city of Elvis. As you know, Elvis is an old, old town built during the Moorish invasion days with large walls around, surrounding the entire city. Our only limitation was that we could never leave the combines confines of the city of Elvis without permission of the colonel. Uh, when we arrived, we also met uh, three British airmen, uh, pilots who had been forced down earlier in the war uh, and may remain with us in the same area throughout the some 28 days that I was in Elvis. Uh, as soon as I saw the horses I knew that was where I was going to spend my time, if that were permitted. It turned out that to be a great experience, and during the time I was trained there, uh, or while we were there, rather, I was trained by the Portuguese uh, officers in a little more better technique of how to ride a cavalry horse with an English saddle and two reins. The first time I mounted one of these horses, I came up to a jump, pulled the wrong rein, and ended up over the top of the horse in the hedge on a, on a uh, jump. So that's when the colonel decided I should have the additional training. We were fortunate to meet up with a number of college students that were in and about Elvis, and with them, we discussed in English and Portuguese a language uh, and made a deal that 
when we listen to the BBC, which everyone in town seemed to listen to every night, that we would help with the translation of English, and in trade, the Portuguese students would teach us Portuguese. And by the end of the 28 days, with the help of these students, I could go into a restaurant and order a meal, I could go into a store and ask for clothing, and was able to carry on at least some conversation with the local people, although I'll admit it was quite limited. The students had a very good command of the English language. These students were anywhere from 16 to 18 and some around 20 years old. The people of Elvis, the normal people, went about their daily business. Uh, we were not, no longer in uniform. We were wearing the same clothes, but all of our insignia or any identification to do with uh, Army Air Corps or the United States had been removed, but we were uh, well kept while we were with the people. We were treated fine, never uh, uh, threatened by anyone. Indeed, it was almost like a vacation from the war. Uh, the cavalry unit uh, took, took great interest in two or three of us that were highly uh, motivated by the training to the extent that eventually we went on cavalry rides across the plains of uh, Portugal. And indeed, the day before I left to return to uh, Lisbon, uh, we went on a cross-country uh, ride and ended up at a farmhouse near the Spanish border where a great luncheon had been spread by the rancher and all of the cavalry troops and those of us that were guests enjoyed a great afternoon uh, in the uh, Portuguese uh, farmland area. All I can say is that the treatment that we received in Elvis could not be exceeded by anyone. When I returned to Portugal, or rather to Lisbon, I stayed there for three days, learned about your city, and by the help of the Portuguese government and the KLM Airlines, the next thing I knew I was in Gibraltar. I want to take this opportunity to thank the government of Portugal, and particularly the people of Portugal and those, uh, of course, from Elvis, for everything that was done for us, the help they gave, for, gave us, and the treatment we received. I wish to Carlos every success with this book. It's an important book. I hope each of you have an opportunity to read it, to understand what happened, why we were there, and what was done by the uh, people of Portugal for each and every one of us. Thank you very much for this opportunity to be able to talk with you today. Goodbye from Calusa, California, USA.